Hello and welcome to a very special Garfield cartoon. It's special because huh? it's not about Garfield. What? Well, why isn't it about me? It's about Mrs. B Ferret. Mrs. Ferret? Her? That's right. A lot of viewers have been asking about her. They want to know who she is. She's a ferret who gets way too excited. They want to know where she came from. I ask myself that every time she's on the show. And they might want to hear what happened last week. Oh, yeah, that might make a good episode. Okay. All right, then. It all started one day when someone brought a house pet to Liz's veterinary clinic. We got her about a week ago. She seems... Very <laughs> active. Uh-huh, ferrets are like that. Ferrets sleep most of the day, but when they're awake, they burn up energy at an amazing rate. This is an animal that must be fed constantly with several meals a day. Are you sure she isn't talking about me? Uh, I'd like her to have a complete checkup. Fine. Just come back tomorrow around this time and pick her up. <laughs> Fine. And make sure you come back for her, hmm? You'd be amazed how many people abandon unwanted pets here. Oh, I wouldn't think of abandoning that cute, adorable ferret. Bye. I got rid of her. Quick, Rebecca, let's get out of here and move to another country. Within a week or two, it became apparent the ferret's owner was not coming back for her. So Liz let someone else adopt Mrs. Ferret. My children will absolutely adore her. Nine hours later... You take this monster back! The next day, someone else adopted Mrs. Ferret. Hey, what a great pet she'll make, eh? <laughs> You take this creature back right now. Oh. Ah. This is the worst pet I ever had. Oh. Take her back. You didn't think she was cute? No. Mister, hmm? can you imagine what it's like to have a pet huh? that is either sleeping or demanding to be fed? Oh, no. I can't imagine what that would be like. Well, I'm going to go get a pet that will be a lot more like a slug. I don't know what to do about her, John. I can't leave her here in the clinic overnight. She has to be fed every two hours. Well, take her home with you. I can't. Huh? You know about my new landlord and pets in the building. Could you keep her at your house? Sure, no problem. I was watching my favorite TV show. I, your ambassador of edibles, <laughs> Eddie Gorman, will be sharing recipes. I have 112 I ways to I can't watch a food show without barbecue. food. 300 <laughs> ways to fix luscious desserts. But then I remembered something. When Mrs. Fair was asleep, she wasn't eating, which meant I could get food. Shh. I had to pick out the quietest food so as not to wake Mrs. Fair. I finally decided that marshmallows were quiet. <laughs> Oh, you ate my marshmallow. You ate all the fruit. Oh. You ate the turkey John roasted for dinner tonight, tomorrow night, and the night after. Oh, I'm a ferret. I have to eat to keep up my energy. Hey, I eat a lot of food, but at least I leave something for somebody else. Huh? Well, at least I occasionally leave something for somebody else. <sighs> Here you go, Garfield. A nice hot bowl of your favorite soup. Oh, boy. Cream of lasagna. Sorry. Tune in for tomorrow's show when we're going to put tons of whipped cream all over. Everything! Oh, whipped cream! 
cream. I love whipped cream more than anything else in the world. <laughs> Odie, the time has come to find a new home for Mrs. Ferret. So Garfield decided he had to do something. He printed out ads that asked people if they wanted to adopt a ferret. Then he posted the ads all over the neighborhood. Someone's got to be dumb enough to take her off our hands. Well, it turned out someone was apparently dumb enough. So she's a neighbor, and she called and says she wants Mrs. Ferret. That's great, John, if you think she'll provide a good home. Oh, she's a very nice lady with a son who's very well behaved. I'll take Mrs. Ferret over there right now. And that's just what he did. Oh, this is wonderful. <gasps> My son will be so happy with his new little playmate. Unfortunately, the son was... Nathan, the youngest, nastiest mad scientist in the fourth grade. Nathan was working on a super grow ray. This will finally enable me to rule the world! Nathan, <gasps> I have a surprise for you. Just what I need in order to conquer the planet! <laughs> I mean, oh, what a great animal to play with. <laughs> <laughs> Soon, Nathan was ready to unleash his new invention. Here it goes. Time at all, Mrs. Ferret had grown to the height of an apartment house. <laughs> A large apartment house. <laughs> and of course, as she grew, so did her need to eat. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. Mrs. Ferret is no longer a big problem. <laughs> it turned out Mrs. Ferret was still a big problem. The biggest. <laughs> As her appetite grew, she switched from trees to cars. And from cars to houses. <laughs> Panic was growing across the city. <laughs> The cat realized it was up to him to come up with a brilliant plan. I'm not sure why you thought that, Garfield. Because this is the Garfield show. I have to save the day, and I did. I came up with a brilliant plan. Tune in for tomorrow's show, when we're going to put tons of whipped cream all over everything. So I remembered something she said. I love whipped cream more than anything else in the world. Ah, uh, I had a three-step plan. Mm -hmm. Step one. Go to the TV station and borrow all the whipped cream Eddie Gourmand was going to use tomorrow. <laughs> Step two, cover the house where Nathan lives with whipped cream. Step three, tell Mrs. Ferret about the lovely Sunday we made for it. Hey. <laughs> whipped cream. I love whipped cream more than anything else in the world. Unless they make me ruler of the world, I'll unleash an army of giant ferrets. <gasps> hey! What's going on? Nathan realized that she was going to eat the entire house and he was in that house. So the only thing that could stop him from becoming ferret food was to reverse the ray.
Oh, well, what has that boy done now? <gasps> I warned him. Oh, the next time he destroyed our house, he wasn't going to get his allowance for three whole weeks. Ouch. <gasps> oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> you saved me. And here I thought you didn't even like me. You thought right. <gasps> well, it's not that. Oh, it's just that whenever I'm awake, I'm eating. Well, I can't help that. I wish someone would adopt me. Someone who eats the way I do. I was thinking the same thing, Odie. Mrs. Ferret, I think I have the perfect master for you. I was going to put whipped cream on things today, but someone borrowed my whipped cream to spread on a house. Can you believe that? <laughs> but I do want to introduce you to my new little friend, Mrs. Ferret. Mrs. Ferret sleeps most of the day, then eats everything all at once, just like me. I think Mrs. <sighs> Ferret finally has a home. That was a great idea, guys. Today, I want to discuss the best way to eat watermelon. <laughs> no, keep it away from your pet ferret. But it was a great idea, and Garfield was pretty happy after that. Getting rid of Mrs. Ferret meant he got his living space back and could eat what he wanted, when he wanted. And there's something even better than that. The next episode, it'll be all about me. Gee, I was hoping it would be all about me. Not a chance. Not cooking. Oh, hi, Garfield. Huh? You probably noticed I'm not cooking. What? <sighs> I will in a moment. <laughs> it's just that sometimes <laughs> I like to come out here and look at the stars. They're so peaceful. They're so beautiful. <gasps> look! You see that? It's a shooting star! Wow! You know what a shooting star is, Garfield? It's a meteoroid that's entering the Earth's atmosphere. Great, let's do dinner. <laughs> It was terrific! I wish I'd been up at the observatory watching it through their big telescope. Dinner on the table! Dinner on the table! Dinner on the table! Uh, Professor Bonkers, did you see the shooting star? Yes! A meteor from the Beta Blue Space Quadrant. Radar says it was down to the size of a gumball, and it landed in the North Hills. Beta Blue, you say? Some scientists claim that meteors from Beta Blue have regressive powers. They say anything that comes into contact with one is turned back into its prehistoric form. Yes, Gertrude. I'm hiking up here in the North Hills. It's very invigorating out here, and I'm having such a <laughs> I just found something odd, Gertrude. It's some sort of glowing rock. It's like a meteor or a... I was saying, Gertrude, it's very invigorating up here. Really, really brings out the caveman in you. I'm sorry I didn't cook dinner earlier last night, guys. Maybe lunch at Vito's will make up for it. Works for me. Oh, gum. I can't stand people who chew gum and just discard it and make a mess. Isn't that awful, Garfield? That's so rude. Away! Away, you get out of my restaurant, you pesky flies! All of you! Ah, Senor Arbuckle! Welcome to Vito's! Thanks, Vito! Oh. Huh? Oh. Huh. Odie, come in and join us as soon as you get that gum off your paw. Oh. 
My cat will have the left side of the menu. <laughs> Excellent choice. Excuse me, waiter. There's a fly in my soup. Oh, one moment, senor. And the right side of the menu. One of our most popular sides waiter, of the menu. There's a fly in my soup. Un momento, senor. Uh, please. Anything else, Garfield? Oh, yes. The back of the menu. <laughs> One of my specialties. I still have this fly in my soup. Senor, can you not see I'm busy with another customer? Tell me, what is a big deal about a fly in your soup? Well, he is rather large. <laughs> can we make that order to go? Hey, Vito, do something! You need a swatter the size of a football field. I'm gonna call for help. This is Vito, Vito's Pizzeria. I would like to report a monster. Thank you. They'll be here in two seconds. One, two. What took them so long? What's this monster you reported? It's a fly. All right. Huh? No, officer, it's a monster fly. It's huge and it has razor sharp teeth. And it could eat more than I can. Ah. I should run you all in. Next time, I'll just order a salad. I shall go prepare the left oh. side and the right side of the menu. Don't forget the back. That's the best part. Garfield, where's Odie? Huh? Huh? Odie! What? Odie! Here, boy! Hmm. I wonder where Odie went. <gasps> Odie! <gasps> We're being drenched in doggy drool. We need help. Help! Help! Super size slurp. Help! Help! Exactly what I said. Uh huh. I see. Okay, thanks. Now it's a giant <laughs> puppy dog. <laughs> Attention, all units. We have a report from a guy in Vito's Pizzeria. He claims that there's a big puppy dog outside. Puppy dog? Sounds like this is right up my alley as a dog catcher. <laughs> Well, I'm your landlord, and your lease says you can only keep a small dog in this apartment. This is not a small dog. <laughs> oh, cry all you want. I don't care. I'm a landlord. <laughs> oh, okay, you're right. It is a small dog. Oh, 
He hasn't licked you yet. Garfield, we have to figure out a way to get him out of the city. Uh, maybe into the countryside. I know. Throwing a stick so he can fetch it? But how will that... I get it. Great idea! How do you lose a mutt the size of a shopping mall? All units, let the puppy dog go. He's headed up to the North Hill. Ah, North Hills, huh? What's the big deal catching a little puppy dog? Come out, little puppy dog, wherever you are. Here, boy. I don't see why the police were making such a big deal. Catching dogs is easy. They're small and harmless and hey! The other men didn't say anything about rain today. Help! Help! I'll never catch another dog again! Leave me alone! <laughs> You see him, Garfield? Maybe we could lure him with a 10-ton doggy treat. Odie! I don't know what happened, but let's not worry about that now. Let's get him home. Hey, there's the truck of that dumb dog catcher who's always chasing us. Don't worry about him. He's too stupid to hurt you. He's a real Neanderthal. Mailman, and isn't it a lovely day? Right, <laughs> you're in a good mood, Mr. Arbuckle. I'm cooking dinner for Liz tonight, and we're going to have a wonderful evening. Life is good. Bye. Yeah, he's right. Life is good. I actually delivered the mail to Arbuckle without running into that cat of his. Ow! That's a special delivery. Welcome to the Mudball Express. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have been expecting that. Well, let's see if I can guess whose electric bill this is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Set the table for dinner. Check. Dust the TV. Check. Pick up trash from Garfield's mid-afternoon snack. Check. Uh, 
Which brings me to the thing I've been putting off as long as possible. Give pets a bath. <laughs> oh, that was great. Anyone can build a house of mud. We built an entire shopping mall. <laughs> huh? Uh, uh, guys, I baked you some lasagna. It's cooling off in the bathroom upstairs. Hey. Lasagna? <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Mm. Yummy, yummy. Where's the lasagna? Hmm. Hold on a sec, Odie. I smell something and it isn't us. Why would John put lasagna in the bathroom unless... <gasps> it's a trap! <laughs> Bath time! Bye. I don't care what you say or what you do. You are going to take a bath. Huh? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll take one just as soon as I get home. <gasps> what makes him think we need baths? We took baths. Well, sometime this year. Hey, let's go see Vito. Maybe he'll treat us to a slice of pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vito's Pizzeria, Vito speaking. <laughs> oh no, Signore, we are not delivering for the next hour. I'm watching my favorite TV program, Complain, Complain with Eddie Gourmand. <laughs> Excuse me while I hang up. Hey, Paul! Oh, hey, Paul! Welcome back to Complain, Complain with me, Eddie Gourmand. This is the show where you, the public, can call in and air your complaints about anything. Except, of course, this show or my wardrobe. <laughs> ah, I see where we have our next caller on the video chat. John Arbuckle. I know John Arbuckle. John, what is your complaint? And why do I think it involves your cat? My cat and my dog. They won't let me give them a bath, and boy, do they need it. So I'm offering a big cash reward to anyone who can give them a bath and return them home before 8 o'clock. I emailed you a recent photo of them. Ooh, we have that image. Take a good look at it, people of this fair city. Ooh, oh, a big cash reward. You can make a lot of money if you find these two and bathe them. <laughs> Vito can do that. A big cash reward. Mrs. Schmidlap can eat salad tonight. I'm gonna go find that cat and dog and give them a bath. All you have to do is give my cat and dog a bath. I'll give his cat and dog a bath. John is making a wonderful dinner for me tonight, Mother. What, strange? No, I don't think John is strange. Name one strange thing he's ever done. Please give my cat and dog a bath, please, please! I'll pay you. Somebody give my cat and dog a bath! <laughs> Mother, I'll talk to you later. Fortunately, no one will take him up on that silly offer. <laughs> Huh? Is it me or is everyone acting weird today? <gasps> Watch out, Odie! Oh. <sighs> Rats! What? Missed him by a hair! Hey, watch it, will you? What's wrong with all these people? <laughs> Come on! Vito's is right down the block here and pizza cures all ills. Oh, God, hurry up and get the big cash reward! <laughs> Garfield! Odie! Oh, come in, come in! I'll make a special just for you. I don't care what it is as long as there's a lot of it. Oh, yes!
Wow, at last, a decent sized bowl of minestrone. <laughs> Well, this minestrone tastes like bath water. Yeah. In you go. Huh? <laughs> Come on, Pop. Vito, what's the soup of the day? <sighs> I think it is a me. Yeah! Why is everyone suddenly so concerned with their hygiene? You two, get in the tub. Time to wash. And Ivy. What do you mean, wouldn't it be easier to just take a bath? <laughs> this is becoming a matter of principle. In the tub! <laughs> I'm sorry, madam. Are you upset? Oh. You idiot! You moron! You idiotic moron! <laughs> 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 We don't smell that bad, do we? <laughs> Darkening luck, drop the soap and water containers. Calabunga! Let's see what kind of trouble we're in now. Hi, huh? guys. It's Liz. Oh. oh, you guys look like you need someone to rescue you from all those people with soap and water and brushes, huh? We're saved. Oh, this is great. Oh. Hey, this isn't the way home. I have to forget about Garfield and Odie for now. Liz will be here any minute. Where should I put the cake? That must be Liz now. I just wish I'd been able to get Garfield and Odie bathed before she got here. I'd like my big cash reward, please. What? I mean, how? The I, I deal mean, I mean... was a big cash reward for getting them bathed and bringing them back here. Here they are. Huh? But, 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 but uh, our date! I... I can't. I have to go to my hairdresser now and buy some new clothes. <laughs> it's okay, John. Whatever you cook for her, we'll eat. Well, at least you two got washed, and that's a good... Oh, oh look oh. at John, all messy now. You know what he needs, Odie? A bath. <laughs> Guys, no, no, no. I don't need a bath. I don't... Stop! No, no, I had a bath. It was uh, I moved me before last. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Help! Help!
Once upon a time, Prince John had to find a bride, and he needed one soon. That if you don't marry by your 21st birthday, the next in line becomes King Ho! Next in line was the Royal Viceroy. He was not a nice man. Pop! We have to stop that man! We have to help Prince John find a wife! Mmm, good burrito. Hope you had something tasty while I was gone. Now, where were we? Add one cup of flour to eggs and whisk thoroughly through until smooth. Add heavy cream. Huh? Huh? Oops, sorry. Wrong book. Oh. Huh? Although that one was getting pretty interesting. Now then, so the brilliant cat and the not brilliant dog were determined to help Prince John marry so he could be king. But time was running out for him to find a bride. I have dreamed for a mate who cared about life and beauty and the world around her. And me. Me would be nice. You didn't find anyone you could marry? Year after year, I spend my days alone No one comes near, I'm always on my own The only life I've known Dreaming every night, I'll find Princess Wright A woman who'll demand me who love and understand me When will she meet me? When will she greet me? She is the woman Who will complete me Where is she hiding? Where's she residing? Things will be so fine On the day she is mine On the day she is mine. In all my days of searching, I have found but one, and she will not marry me. You found, you found one? Yes. She is caring and compassionate. Her name is Elizabeth. <sighs> and she is a commoner. Oh, a commoner. A commoner! <sighs> Prince John told the royal food taster. <laughs> Huh? Oh, wait. <laughs> Are you quite finished? Fine. So Prince John told the royal food taster about the woman named Elizabeth, who lived in a cottage in the blue forest to be near the animal she so dearly loved and cared for. She would feed the friendly squirrels. She would feed the stray cats and dogs. She would feed the colorful bluebird. She would feed mice and moles. And she would even feed the real disgusting creatures you sometimes find out in the woods. The birds and animals all love you, Fair Elizabeth. Ah, uh, that's because I love them. I love you too, Prince John. But I will not be your bride. Huh? Why not? The man I marry must show he has extraordinary heart. I have heart. You are a good man, Prince John, but you have lived a pampered life. You have never been called upon to show you possess that quality. <sighs> that is sadly true. <laughs> How before the deadline could I possibly prove to her I am all that? I cannot even prove it to myself! Sure you can! You go out to the blue forest, find your lady love, and convince her to be your bride. 
You oh. think I should? You're the hero of the story. Act like it. Ah, my cat is right. I'm always right. <laughs> <laughs> I shall ride into the blue forest and find her now. <gasps> Hold on. Back in a sec. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. oh, by the way, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why I thank him. I can't talk and he can't hear me. Okay, now. Where was I? Oh, yes. The prince admitted his cat was right. And... Well, if you wanted pizza... You should have ordered eight of them like I did. <laughs> the prince said, I shall ride into the blue forest and find her now. Like a man possessed, the prince rode his fiery charger out of the castle and off towards the blue forest. He was determined not to return until he reached his lady love and convinced her to become his bride. <laughs> Don't get so happy yet, it's not that easy. Hmm. Meanwhile, the dashing cat thought his troubles were over. See how it works, pup? Prince John will get her to marry him, the evil viceroy will not become king, and all my problems will be solved. <laughs> oh no! What's a shoe? You have some perfume! Not all my problems will be solved. Yeah! It's bad time again! You're watching the air! Get out for your yeah! mother's dad! Have a kitty! Oh, we want to play no. dress up with the kitty cat! We want to play dress up with the kitty cat! And this still is a bad color for me. Look! It's, it's a puppy dog! Puppy dog! It's a puppy dog! <laughs> Looks like the prince is heading up into the blue forest. So, like, if he convinces Ow. the animal lady to marry him, what happens to your plan to become king? He won't convince her because he won't get to her. There's only one road into the blue forest, and I've arranged to have it guarded by someone. <laughs> Towards the blue forest, Prince John rode, determined that nothing would stop him from reaching his fair Elizabeth. But something could stop him. He could be stopped by... Uh, the thing that could stop him was... Oh, wait, I'm trying to think. Uh, oh, good heavens. Look what time it is. I have to go annoy the mailman. I'll be right back. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just you, Garfield. I thought maybe you'd have some trick in mind to scare me. Yeah. You know, like dressing up as a fire-breathing dragon. Huh? Me? Sweet, kindly me? Fire-breathing dragon, huh? Hmm. Here's your mail. Scaring the mailman is not nice, but it is part of my job description. <laughs> Bill, 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 John has jury duty. Bill, fire-breathing dragon, huh? <clears throat> but as Prince John made his way into the forest, Prince John rode as a man possessed, determined to reach the fair Elizabeth. A man he encountered warned him of the danger that lay ahead. A fire-breathing dragon? Up the road a piece. You can't miss him. He's a dragon and he breathes fire. I will not be denied my true love. I am not afraid of any fire-breathing <laughs> dragon. <laughs> Unfortunately, my horse is. But I will not be denied! Deeper and deeper into the forest he went. But there was no sign of this monster he'd been warned about. Fire-breathing dragon, ha! What nonsense! What foolishness! <laughs> doing here? No, I wouldn't exactly describe Prince John as brave. Eh, uh, courageous? No, 
Stupid. You're getting warmer. I guess the word that best describes him is... Barbecued. I'd say medium rare. Somehow the prince made it back to the castle. There, spirits were down and taxes were going up. A tax on using adverbs. A tax on clipping your toenails on a Wednesday. A tax on your name, Michael. Prince John turns 21 at noon tomorrow. If he isn't married, that nasty man becomes king. What are we going to do? A tax on not making up your mind. Hmm. You know that real dumb thing Prince John just tried? Well, I hate to say it, but I think we have to try it too. And so the adorable cat and the not-too-bright dog set off for the blue forest. Prior to take off, please make sure that your seat and tray tables are in the upright position and that all electronic devices are powered off. Are you ready? And away we go! <laughs> I hope someone comes by to pass out those little bags of peanuts. They had gotten about as far as Prince John got when... Do not be afraid, faithful and furry friend. There's no reason to be afraid of a fire-breathing dragon. None whatsoever. I'll be back in the castle. Let me know how things turn out. And there they stood. The brave cat and the mediocre dog, face to face with the dragon, and then, and then, and then, and then, you know what goes great after pizza? A tuna salad sandwich on rye. You guys just love it when we come up here to the farm and stay with my brother. I want to go home. There's the sun, the air, the great outdoors. I want to go home. What more could anyone want? TV, oh. pizza delivery, air conditioning, an internet connection, my own bed, and not being woken up at 5 a.m. by a stupid rooster. I want to go home. <laughs> I just wish Doc Boy didn't work so hard. Don't call me Doc Boy. You know what he needs? A companion. You know what I need? To go home. But I think you're working too hard. You're low too much. Doc Boy always works like that. Have I mentioned that I want to go home? I want to go home. Look, Garfield. I know you're bored. Here, huh? take my cell phone. There are plenty of games on there and you can access the internet. Maybe it'll keep you busy. I want to go home. Don't you ever do anything but chores? Not now, John. Can't you see I'm busy? I was trying to say that maybe you need a woman uh, in your life. I don't have time for a woman in my life. I have a farm to run. Care for an omelet? <laughs> you should have someone at your side. Someone to share the pleasures and trials of life. Where will I find someone? I work from dawn till dusk and I live in the middle of nowhere. <gasps> pizza? Gloria, you usually deliver packages. And I didn't order any pizzas. <laughs> No, but I have a strange hunch who did. Garfield, did you use my cell phone to order those from Vito's? Yes, and I still want to go home. So, 
how are you, Mr. Arbuckle? Busy. Oh. I have to slop hogs. Say, have you seen that new monster movie at the drive-in? It's still playing if you have it. Oh. Watch this. He'll blow it. <laughs> I don't have time for monster movies. I have corn to pick. I told you. Bye. You want the crust? Mm. Too bad there aren't going to be any. <laughs> Here, I was kidding. By the way, I still want to go home. I'm telling you, she's interested in you. Oh. She's the rush around express driver. She's interested in picking up packages and delivering packages. It's not natural to live your life alone. Life is meant to be shared. You know what the three most wonderful words are in the entire world? Let's go home. John, could we discuss this after I plow the North 40? Huh? <gasps> huh. <laughs> Garfield, we need to pack. Oh, we're packed. <laughs> I don't want to stay here and watch my brother spend his life picking apples alone. <sighs> Hello? John, it's your brother. Sorry to wake you up at this hour. When you were here, you said something about the three most wonderful words in the world. But you didn't say what the words were. I love you. Well, I love you too, John. But what are the three words? Ah, I get it. Talk to you in the morning. <sighs> I love you. Yeah, that might be nice to hear once in a while. I'll get it. Of course you will. Oh, Dog Boy. I thought about what you said. You're right. I need a woman in my life. <laughs> Excellent! And the best place to find one is in the city. I had my friend Elmer drop me off, and he's going to be watching my farm for me. I'm going to stay with you until I find the love of my life. Yo! And, <laughs> and don't, don't call, call you Doc, Doc Boy. Boy, right. He said that as long as he's staying with us, he insists on cooking. Here you go, a nice healthy farm dish. Dandelion and wheatgrass soup. <laughs> ah. To grow proper rutabagas, you need well-prepared soil in a sheltered area with full sun. That's good to know. You don't mind me watching my farm programs, do you? <sighs> no. Good, because there's a five-hour special on later about different kinds of shop. <laughs> we have to help that man meet someone so we can get Doc Boy out of here. <laughs> See you later, John. I'm going to town. Hi there. Gee, I seem to have lost my Nobel Peace Prize somewhere around here. Oh, no. He's just going to walk up to strangers and try to strike up a conversation? Huh? You're asking what could happen? Oh, well, I have several more at home. Say, I was wondering if... <laughs> that. You can't just approach strangers like that. It's rude. Oh, wait. Oh. This is promising. He's figuring out that there may be something wrong with that just fell off the tractor look. He's going in to buy himself a new outfit. Odie, this is great. Hey, that's not a bad outfit if you want to look like Binky the Clown. Anyone out there remember Binky? Yeah, I didn't think so. 
seven-foot-tall lady wrestler, age 70, who plays the bagpipes, seeking male any age who enjoys watching Bread Ghost Tale. Hmm, not for me. Excuse me, miss. May I hold your fine dog for you while you tie your shoelace? Why, that would be very nice of you. Here. Keep a good grip on him. He gets very upset if he sees a cat. Hey, she's actually talking to him. Oh, that's a good sign. Down boy, mustn't chomp the kitty. Give me that. Hey, wait. Would you like to go out with me sometime? <sighs> Hi, Garfield. I'm not doing so well with women. I need a magic potion that will make them like me. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. This guy doesn't get it. There are no magic potions. It's just a matter of people liking each other. Hey. Huh? Try Philippe's cologne. Makes men irresistible to women. Sounds like just what I need. <laughs> that kind of thing never. One oh. whiff of this and the ladies will love me. What is that wonderful smell? Is it you? It's, it's you. What is that fragrance? Oh, you smell so divine! Ladies, please, I'm from the farm. Don't get too excited. Huh? He's having a wet Please, ladies, I'm outnumbered. There you are, you wonderful smelling creature. You're mine, all mine. Yes, I'm yours, all yours. Let's go out to dinner some night. Where would you like to go? Anywhere that I can smell you. Oh, Henry. What are you doing with my girlfriend? I'm really sorry you couldn't find your soulmate, Doc Boy. Maybe you need to give it more than one day. Huh, or maybe I'm just meant to be alone. And don't call me, you know. Gloria, well, what brings you here? I didn't call for a pickup. We have a date, remember? A date? Yes, you send me these gorgeous flowers with the nurse's card. Dear Gloria, please accept these modest flowers. Would you go out with me tonight to see that monster movie at the drive-in? Oh, I thought you'd never ask me. But, but I, I, well, I... Garfield, huh? did you use my cell phone to order flowers for Gloria and compose that cheesy invite? <laughs> nice work. You see, Odie, you don't have to go out and find happiness. You just have to be willing to let it find you. Whoa, that was deep, wasn't it? Oh, Garfield, almost uh, forgot. Here's your delivery. Huh. And of course, there are other ways of finding happiness.
Do you get the idea that I like hot dogs? Another one. I'm sorry, pal. I'm a lot of hot dogs. Here's your bill. Here's my wallet. Garfield, I said we could stop for a light snack. 244 hot dogs is not a light snack. They are if you leave off the chili. Good afternoon, Mr. Edge. I keep telling you, Joe, call me Tyler. I'll have the usual. <sighs> Did that man say he was Tyler Edge? I didn't hear a word after sorry, I'm all out of hot dogs. <laughs> Here you go, one six sausage sandwich. Thanks. Mr. Edge, Tyler, I don't have change of a thousand dollar bill. Keep the change. Buy yourself a house. <laughs> yeah. That is Tyler Edge. I didn't hear a word after six sausage sandwich. Oh. Mm. Mm. Cartoonist, huh? <laughs> oh. What are you drawing? <laughs> oh, nothing really. I'm kind of doodling, you know, looking for a new comic strip character. You're Tyler Edge, aren't you? <laughs> well, I'm not Tyler Edge. Mm. I'm the Tyler Edge. <laughs> Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge. Hmm. That name sounds familiar. Odie, do you know who Tyler Edge is? Of course not. You never know anything. Wait here. Hey. Sorry, I need to borrow your computer for a second. Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge, Tyler Edge. Ah, here we are. Tyler Edge made his first zillion dollars when he was 16 years old. He quickly built the world's largest empire of video games, cartoon shows, comic books, and major motion pictures. They call him the man who knows exactly what today's young audiences want to buy. Thanks. I just had to look that up. The way you draw is kind of interesting. Tell you what, what did you say your name was? John Arbuckle. Oh, not a good name. But okay, tell you what, bring me a concept, and if I think today's audience will go for it, I'll make you a very rich man. Huh? Ooh, I give you one tip. Draw and write what you know. Oh. Mm. Guys, this is the opportunity of a lifetime. I want to go right home and go to work. Okay, but on the way home, could we stop for more hot dogs? I'm thinking maybe a college student who gets stung by a spider and develops spider abilities. Nah, no one would ever read a comic book like that. Huh? John is having this thing called writer's block. Do you know what writer's block is, Odie? It's when you stare stupidly at a blank page for days and forget to feed your adorable pets. No. <laughs> A gerbil. A crime-fighting gerbil. No, no, a horse. A and set in the Stone Age. <laughs> no, two horses and a sailor. And the sailor's a robot! <laughs> and they're all fish. <laughs> and radioactive! It's been done. <laughs> I'm a failure! A failure! I can't come up with any new, fresh ideas! <laughs> come on, Odie. Let's give him a new, fresh idea. <laughs> Why? Us, of course. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I get it. You think I should drop a comic book about you guys? The man is clear on the concept. Oh, it would never work. A comic about a cat who eats lasagna and sleeps all day? And a dog with a long tongue? <laughs> Who would ever be interested in something like that? <sighs> if I took an idea like that to Tyler Edge, he'd throw huh? me right out of his... I give you one tip. Draw and write what you know. Huh? What you know? Ah. <laughs> I could do a comic about a cat who eats lasagna and sleeps all day. Yes. And a puppy with a long tongue that fetches sticks all the time. Yes. And I could set it in the future and make you both zombie penguins. No. <laughs> oh, you're right. No zombie <sighs> penguins. This is the greatest idea in the world. 
and I have so much material for it. Thank you for agreeing to look at my idea. I hope you like it. If I like it, the world will like it. Lay it on me. Well, it's about a fat orange cat. Hey. And uh, there's a pea brain puppy. Hey, here are some drawings I did. They're on paper. Well, yeah, drawings are usually on paper. I can't relate to paper, <gasps> Arbuckle. I have to see Ooh. things animated. Let's go to my animation department. Huh? <sighs> oh, you mean you're going to have your team of animators animate my comic strip? <laughs> That's fantastic! Team of animators? Don't be ridiculous. Huh? So we got rid of animators years ago. It's all done by computers now. Why pay people to sit and draw all day? Can you believe it, guys? You're going to be animated! Us? Cartoon characters? <laughs> Who would have thought? Uh-huh. Yeah. We're working on having the computer create a solid hologram of a character, but that's in the future. Right now, it's building computer models based on your drawings. Oh. All right, done. Now let's see what an episode might look like. No, I will not go through the stick so you can fit. Boring! I think it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, that's because you aren't me. First thing, the color of the cat is all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe blue or beige or... Hey, polka dots are popular. They look like I have measles. Wait, wait, pink. Whoa! Uh -huh. Pink is very big this year. I'm hearing they may make the sky pink. Do you think Garfield oh. should be pink like that and... I like it. I like it. <sighs> now we have to do something about that voice of his. I want some lasagna. Nah, it doesn't fit him. I'll try some different ones. Here. I want some lasagna. 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 But I know what we need. A celebrity voice. I thought I was a celebrity. It's very popular these days. Animated characters voiced by movie stars. I'll be back for more lasagna. I'm starting to really not like this. Well, okay. Now, what about Odie? Huh? I'm thinking let's lose the dog. <laughs> Hasta la vista, Odie. <laughs> but, but Odie is an important part of the idea. Uh, nobody wants to see dogs. How many hit cartoon shows can you name that have a dog? <laughs> All of them. For that matter, I'm not so sure about a cat. <laughs> No, 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 I don't think so. Wrong, definitely not. Maybe a cat, but a, a different design. Couldn't we just let Garfield be Garfield? Wait, uh, I have it. I have it, Arbuckle. The most awesome today vision. That's it, that's it. Is right. Tyler. What is it? What is it, Arbuckle? It's the idea that's gonna make me another jillion dollars and you a couple of bucks. I think I'll take my idea somewhere else. Yay, John. Wait, you can't leave. You're not getting my full vision. Here, here, I'll create a solid hologram of them to show you. I thought you said that process wasn't perfected. <laughs> well, it isn't, but I have to make you see what I see. See? See how awesome it is? <gasps> no! It's horrible! Get rid of it! Get rid of me! I get rid of you! Let's get out of here.
Is he gone? He destroyed the computer that projected his hologram. You'll never see him again. Good. From the neck down, he was pretty ugly. My entire computer animation department is destroyed. It'll take like years to rebuild it. What'll I do till then? Ah, uh, I don't know. Maybe hire huh? some human beings who know how to draw? You just might be onto something, Marbuckle. <laughs> Lucky my drawing survived. I'm going to go look for someone who will like my idea enough to keep it the way it is. Well, good luck, but I think you're wasting your time. What do you think, guys? Oh, I don't know. Odie, do you think anyone would watch a cartoon show about a cat that eats lasagna and a puppy with a long tongue? Yeah, me neither.